uh, <coughs> welcome to the second session of this third module so in this module we will be majorly concentrating on the geometry of a, a liquid flat plate collector in the previous uh, session we have discussed the performance uh, of a uh, performance study of a liquid flat plate collectors in which we have derived various equations related to the amount of instant amount of uh, solar radiations received and uh, that is uh, total ra uh, radiations which have been received which is nothing but uh, which includes the diffuse and uh, beam radiations we have derived an equation for that and we have also studied a equation which relates the amount of heat generated because of the solar radiation uh, which are falling under the flat plate characters and then we have also uh, uh, discussed an equation efficiency instant efficiency of a collectors which is given by the total radiations divided by the product of the upper uh, the flat uh, absorber plate area into the QL okay now in this uh, module uh, the second session we shall discuss about the geometry of uh, the flat plate collector basically this uh, uh, flat plate collectors basically it will have a components which are of uh, uh, liquid uh, flat plate and transparent cover will be there absorber plate and there will be a box or a frame assembly will be there I mean the, and a, a sealants will be there or ceilings will also be there okay this flat plate collectors are an extension of basic idea of place a collector in an o open like a box or it is something like an oven like a box it is something a rectangular a box with a glass in the direction of the sun and most of flat plate collectors have two horizontal pipes at the top and the bottom called the headers and then the follower or we also many smaller vertical pipes will also be there which are called as a risers there will be one which is at the top which is called as a header and there will be a number of parallel i'm sorry particular uh, particularly all these parallel plates which are in perpendicular to the the major header will be there so these are all the, uh, the pipes which will take away the heat Basically, a flat plate collector, which is also termed as a heat exchanger, which converts the radiant solar energy from the sun into heat energy using a well-known greenhouse effect. As the plate gets hotter and hotter, this heat is being conducted through the risers and then the absorbed by the flow, fluid flow inside the copper pipes, which is then used by the household applications. These flat plate collectors have uh, different uh, uh, types actually. The flat plate collectors uh, which has been, uh, which are of two types, which is a liquid heating collector and the air or gas heating collectors. In most of the domestic applications we use in India, in particular, we use it for water heating purpose rather going for a air heaters or a heat, space heating or space cooling purposes. So what happens? This flat plate collectors which are extensively used the design keeps changing whether you are using a water or whether you are using a air it uh, design will definitely changes it is only because the fluid properties keeps changing i was just talking about if you take one of the property of a water and a gas there will be a thousand times the density is a different so based on these applications also we just change it basically in flat plate collectors sunlight passes through the glazing uh, transparent uh, uh, cover and strikes the absorber plate which heats up changing the solar energy into heat energy these have got its own limitations also uh, which uh, uh, which are uh, in the in the previous section itself we have uh, told it is a lack of optimized optical concentrators and the area from which heat is lost is large also due to the same reason a high temperature cannot be obtained or attained as a result of collection efficiency is generally low this is uh, one of the major disadvantage or a drawback of this basically this flat plate collectors are probably the most fundamentals and most steady technology for solar powered domestic hot water systems the overall idea behind this technology is pretty simple the sun heats a dark flat plate surface which collects as much energy as possible and then energy is transferred to water, air and other fluid for further uses. 
is a clear and whatever this movement of the fluid whether it may be a air or it may be a gas or it may be a water or it may be any fluid the movement of the fluids will be automatic we are not supplying any external energy apart from solar energy we are not supplying any external energy by the buoyancy differences or by the temperature differences what happens the buoyancy forces will comes into picture that is what uh, in technically if you are a mechanical engineer we talk about the grashof number grashof number is the one which talks about the buoyancy forces of difference this uh, forces the buoyancy forces exerts because of the temperature difference whenever there is a difference in the temperature of any fluid within the fluid it can be within the fluid or between the fluid also now here in this factor it is within the fluid what is happening is there is a temperature difference is exerting because of this gradient that is gradient is nothing but change in the temperature exerts the density difference thus it automatically flows now even you can try sometimes when the bus when the vehicle is not moving if you open the window what happens suddenly you feel very cool where the cold air is coming inside whereas the hot air it is displaced so this is what we call it as a currents or the buoyancy forces by naturally it just exchanges that is the beauty and advantage of this flat plate collector there there are some of uh, main components of a, a flat plate collectors in depth i just want to go it a black surface which has been painted on this absorbent of an incident of solar radiations black is only because it absorbs all the radiations and increases the heat yes it is what is the glazing cover a transparent layer uh, that transmits radiation on the absorber but prevents radiative and convective heat loss from the surface is it clear tubes containing heat in fluid tubes i just i just try told you there will be a one riser will be there in the top there will be one riser in the top and there will be a perpendicular parallel number of parallel uh, tubes will be there which will be taking out the direct heat once it has been heated it will come to the riser and where it will be collected is it clear so the number of tubes containing heating fluid to transfer the heat from the collectors okay now supports structures to protect you to protect the components and hold them in a place now supportive structure basically you might have seen the flat plate collectors will be always from certain height of the ground it will be something like this it will not be placed over the roof as such in the nature so what happens the back or the bottom losses will be more so in order to avoid that what happens we always keep the a flat plate collector just above a little above the uh, ground level obviously it will be inclined but it will be above the ground level uh, that is what we call it as a support structure insulation covering sides and bottom of the collector to reduce the heat losses a flat plate uh, systems normally operate and reach the maximum efficiency within the temperature range from 30 to 80 degree centigrade so that is what the water can maximum reach up to 80 degree centigrade no it is not reaching 100 degree centigrade it is good or else what happens the change of phase does ha happens which damages the system as well however some uh, new types of collectors that employ vacuum insulation can achieve a higher temperatures up to 100 degree centigrade which are mostly used in industrial applications but not in domestic applications okay now even for uh, domestic applications up to 45 80 degree centigrade 60 or 50 degree centigrade it is more than sufficient is it clear so based on the capacity required we will place the flat plate collectors okay due to the introduction of selective coatings i just shall come to that later on what do you mean by selective coatings the stagnation fluid temperature in flat plate collectors have been shown to reach up to 200 degree centigrade that means up to 200 degree centigrade we can reach it that means up to 200 means we are reaching a superheated steam as it is 250 260 is a superheated steam temperature so what happens we are already in between dry dry saturated steam and to the superheated steam that is up to 200 degree centigrade okay by using a selective coatings we can achieve 200 degree centigrade also we are not talking about only the domestic applications we are also keeping a commercial and industrial applications also 
Some of the major advantages of the flat rate collectors are that they are easy to manufacture, low cost, collect both beam and diffuse radiation. This is all a common sense we have already discussed and permanently fixed. No sophisticated positioning or tracking equipment is required where this tracking equipment is required for the concentrating collectors. Whether it may be point contact, point concentrating or a line concentrating and uh, that but concentrating connectors require this tracking system whereas this doesn't require and then a little maintenance is required a flat plate connectors are installed facing to the equator that is the south oriented in the nor northern uh, northern hemisphere and north orientation in the southern hemisphere now you can see the flat plate collectors will be always placed in the north as well as uh, or in the south direction so that what happens if it is been placing like this in the north collections what happens in the sunrise the solar radiations will fall here even in the afternoon the solar radiations will fall here and in the evening also the solar radiations will be falling so at any stage from sun morning to evening from dawn to dusk the solar radiations will be falling onto this so there will not be any Hiding or a shading effect will come into picture unless otherwise an external building comes out. Okay, so this is the idea behind of it. If you keep it for a east during the west, it will not solar radiations will not be falling onto this collector plate. If it is towards the west, same thing will come into picture. So that is the reason why we always keep it in the place of north or south directions. The optimal that is what I just shall discuss over here. The optimal tilt of the collector plate is close to the latitude of the location it is plus or minus 15 degrees of inclination if the application is a solar cooling the optimum installation angle is latitude minus 10 degrees centi uh, minus 10 degrees so that the solar beam is perpendicular to the collector during the summer time this is the idea behind of it so the latitude plus or minus 15 degrees and if it is an optimum installation angle will be given by latitude minus 10 degrees if the application is a solar heating if it is a solar cooling it is minus 10 degrees if it is a solar heating it is plus 10 degrees that's it okay so it just keeps varying so in general it will be in and around 15 degrees okay it was found however that for a year round hot water applications the optimum angle is a latitude plus 5 degrees so so it is 5 degrees to the latitude for the hot water applications which provides somewhat a better performance during a winter when the hot water is more needed next a transport of fluid options okay the flat plate collectors can involve liquid or air heat transport in general. Water is one of the common options as liquid fluid due to its accessibility and good thermal properties. Okay, it has a relatively high volumetric heat capacity. High heat capacity is been there for that which is 4.18 uh, kilojoules per kg degree Kelvin. That is a heat capacity for a water. And then it is the only assumed incompressible fluid. I'm um, sorry, a liquid. It's only the incompressible, even in the fluid mechanics, we assume this is a, one of the only incompressible liquid existing on the earth, or almost incompressible. It has a high a mass density, it has a thousand mass density, and no other uh, fluid except the oils has got so much of uh, mass density that is 1000 kg per meter cube which allows this high density mass density allows small tubes and pipes for the transport one disadvantage of the water is that it freezes during the winter no actually uh, in uh, india only in the north parts where the snowfall uh, happens we don't uh, expect it to be freeze in the southern part of India, we always uh, we don't uh, reach a temperature where the freezing uh, will does occur. So actually, freezing will start with zero degrees. But when you go for cold uh, in the winter season, if you go to Delhi or Jammu and Kashmir, Manali, all those three, 
where the temperature reaches up to minus 10 degrees minus 12 degrees centigrade so what happens that there are chances of freezing the water that is the one thing and maybe the oxidation the, the corrosion which may, uh, which may be one of the uh, drawback of using the water and this freezing can damage the collector or piping systems obviously it is true this can be managed by draining down the collector at low solar inputs below the critical insulation thresholds that means in such kind of what in such kind of uh, occasions what we have to do it is we have to drain it that means we have to make it as an empty which doesn't uh, damages the pipes or the risers drain down sensors is often employed to monitor the system to ensure the complete draining as a pocket of water freezing can cause the damage refilling the system with water on the next morning also is not perfect so that is true possible air pockets in the collectors can be a problem blocking of water flow and decreasing system efficiency this is what uh, the major disadvantages of using the water as a working fluid the common the common uh, antifreeze components are ethylene glycol or propylene glycol whether it may be ethylene C2H5 glycol and the propylene glycol these are the common antifreeze components which are being uh, used in a flat plate collectors in order to avoid the problems which come across with the freezing of the water so what happens by using this, these chemicals are mixed with water, require closed loop systems and proper disposal due to toxicity. Now, when you use this, it may reduce the anti-freezing, uh, it, it may increase the anti-freezing effects using the water, but still what happens, since these are all the chemicals, it has to be once the freezing effect is over, that means after the winter what happens, this has to be thoroughly cool, thoroughly, thoroughly clean. It has to be cleaned properly because of the they are the chemicals and the toxicity does it occurs during these cases. So what happens? This has to be cleaned properly because in most of the water, domestic water heating applications, we use it for both. We use it for cleaning purposes. So this toxicity of the chemicals, ethylene glycol or the propylene glycol, which have been mixed with water, should not affect our daily uh, life or the health that is the reason behind of this so i feel whether you go for uh, anti-freezing components or with the draining draining also has a one of the drawback where once again you have to fill it up in the morning will, will not be an easy task nominal anti-freeze service life is about five years anti-freezing service will be about for five years after which it needs to be replaced Anti-freezing service will be only for the five years on, in, uh, on, on average. Okay, and even for the uh, southern part of uh, India who are uh, using these uh, solar uh, liquid flat rate collector doesn't require this anti-freezing service also. Because we the temperature doesn't uh, reach us to the zero degrees centigrade in most of our cases. It's very rare that we reach the zero degree temperature. So much of uh, winter will not come across. So air can be used as a transport fluid in some uh, designs of flat plate collector. Basically, this air is used in space heating and cooling applications, but uh, this can also be used to use for the other purposes also. This option is better suited only to the space heating applications or crop drying applications, not for the domestic applications. Maybe space heating is a domestic application, but uh, may not be so effective as a flat plate, uh, liquid flat plate collectors applications. A fan is usually required to facilitate air flow in the system and efficient heat transport. Certain designs can provide passive effects, no fans, movement of air due to thermal buoyancy forces which may come across. Phase change liquids can also be used with the flat plate collectors. Phase change liquids, so that is the one which does the changes, like our refrigerants. Uh, one refrigerant, refrigerants uh, will always have a, a lower boiling point, which suddenly changes from liquid to the 
uh, gaseous state at lower temperature itself. So, such kind of phase change liquids can also be used with flat plate collectors. Some refrigerants are included in this group of fluids. That is what I have been talking about. Because of these refrigerants will always have a lower boiling point. Then they do not freeze which eliminates because their freezing temperature will be minus if you take ammonia the freezing temperature will be minus 40 degrees centigrade. So nowhere uh, of India where we reach minus 40 degrees centigrade that means they will not freeze. So thus such kind of uh, liquids can also be used. They do not freeze which eliminates the troubles of explained above for water and due to their low boiling point that can change from liquid to gas as the temperature increases. Is it clear? Those fluids can be practically a setting where quick response to rapid temperature fluctuation is required. So now my dear friends, these are all uh, which occurs. The alternative fluids, what we can use it for a flat plate collectors. Now here, a freezing effect can be overcome with the different types of one is we can use uh, the water as a predominant one if water is not a preferred one where the environmental conditions uh, makes it to get freezes so you just imagine if a pipe if it freezes it will not flow obviously it harms the property of the material which has been covered by that and it will also affect the performance or efficiency of that system so in order to avoid this there are uh, three options or four options are there one, the first option is to drain it and fill it once again in the morning. Though this is once again, it is a problematic to fill it up in the morning and drain it in the evening. Okay. Uh, the second option is using a chemicals like ethylene glycol and the propylene glycols. Now here, once again, problem is these ethylene and propylene glycols, when it is being mixed with water, it will they are called as antifreezers. These antifreezers, what they will do it is they will restrict the water getting freezed but once again the major disadvantage over here is that these anti-freezers are chemicals which may affect which may be hazardous to uh, the human life so these most of these flat plate collectors we will use it for domestic applications are not advisable to go for this glycol of a propylene or ethylene so what happens if you use it once again we have to thoroughly clean it and whatever the uh, water which has been mixed with this has to be removed it will be wasted so this is also a, a one of the option based on the requirement we can go for this and the third one is we can use the air which doesn't freeze us at this so what happens if you use a air air cannot be used uh, for the uh, hot water uh, purposes because a uh, water is a different one from the air air this can be an alternative method which can be used only for a space heating purposes not for the any other purposes okay space heating and crop drying agricultural purposes okay next one is we can also use a phase changing uh, liquids phase changing liquids means which changes the free phase okay phase change liquids can also be used and then the fifth option is we can use a not freezing elements that means a low freezing the temperatures which are nothing but a refrigerants these refrigerants can be used where their boiling uh, freezing temperature is very less maybe around minus 40 degrees or minus 60 degrees centigrade where the environment doesn't reach us to up to that uh, coldness so such kind of anti uh, uh, freezing elements like the refrigerants can also be used these are all the alternative methods wherein can be used in a liquid flat plate collectors find uh, these uh, points to be noted actually now let me uh, show you one uh, liquid uh, flat plate collector which tells you the insulation no even in the here the black color paint which has been uh, shown over here it is nothing but an absorber plate and this absorber plate has been maintained with the transparent screens now between this transparent screen, the first transparent screen which is near to this absorber is always maintained minimum of 2, two cm distance. This 2 cm distance is being maintained in order to avoid the convective losses that might occur 
during the conversion of solar radiations into heat. So this is what happens. So even we can keep increasing the transparent screens or the transparent covering coverings, which depends upon once again the requirement. Once again, we will uh, there is one separate topics where we will talk about the number of uh, sheets that is required or the transparent covers screening is required. This is basically in uh, nine out of ten uh, occasions we will always go with the glass because it is more flexible and sophisticated and it allows more uh, solar radiations when compared to the transparent plastics. Okay, so uh, and then we will also have. One, one more, uh, now in this sketch we have got one more uh, cover, once again this will also be maintained with certain distance. This is once again uh, reduces the convection losses that might occur. Now if you take a number of blue color tubes, there are five number of tubes are there which may be made up of a good thermal conducting material, may be made up of aluminum or copper, wherein which the liquid fluid will, uh, fluid will be allowed to flow, whether it may be a air or it may be a antifreezer or it may be a water or it may be any a liquid or a fluid which has been used for the purposes. So if you consider a water heating purposes, the water will be flowing through this. Now enough care is been taken. Now it is a uh, front view. If you see the side view what happens as much as possible, these tubes will be connected to this uh, black absorber plate make sure that there will be a maximum contact between this and this that is a, a tubes and to the observer plate there should be a maximum area of contact so the maximum area of contact the maximum heat flow will take place the lesser the contact area lesser the heat transfer takes place so that is the reason why they will go for the maximum heat transfer connections it's only because of this this number of tubes also depends upon the designs so whether it may be a 5 or it may be a 7 or it may be a 9 or it may be a 9 be and 11 based on this designing and capacity which we are just looking out for that. Now then we will have a thermal insulation not only at the bottom even the complete box will be with the thermal insulation even in the top of screen so what you can see it here it is an insulators. This insulators will be always placed in order to avoid the conductive losses which might take place that means whatever the heat that is being generated over here should not conduct it outside. So what we will what we'll do it is inside the flat plate uh, collector we will keep all the sides we will keep an insulator cover whether it may be a wood or it may be a thermocol or it may be a plastic or it may be any insulator it may be a wool also. So what happens we will cover it completely with those uh, insulating material thermally insulating material which restricts the conductive uh, heat losses. Is a clear so that is the idea behind of it and this radiative losses will be always uh, prevented by avoiding and by keeping it in a, uh, a tilted angle towards the south or it may be towards the north so this is the idea behind of a, a liquid flat plate collector so whatever the heat that has been heated over here will be collected in a riser which is placed above this this is the uses of this uh, uh, flat plate collector and these are all the different uh, parts. Now even in the parts when we are talking about a absorber plate, now this is the complete box itself we call it as a collector. Now this is an absorber plate. By making this absorber plate with a black color will also reduces the radiation losses. So by this we can uh, restrict the conductive losses, convective losses and then the radiative losses. So how much ever we prevent the losses but still the energy conversion system that is the efficiency of this conversion system will be much less. It is only because instantaneously it does not converts. So that is why we always deal about instantaneous conversion energy or efficiency. This efficiency of this flat plate collector it is always been uh, on a lower side and uh, when it is compared to the concentrating collectors with a tracking system. Point to be noted for a concentrating collector with the tracking system gives a better efficiency than the solar uh, flat uh, liquid flat plate collectors.
these are all the different uh, parts of a flat plate collectors and these can also be changed the insulator can be a different one a tubes can be made up of different one a working fluid can be different one and this transparent screens or the covering can also be different one but enough care should be taken that this observer plate actually this figure uh, does not supports our uh, statements actually this observer plates are apparent area what we talk it a talk it uh, talk about is apparent area that is aa or the plate area observer plate area should be should be less whereas this uh, should be less uh, rather saying it as a less this covering area the sheet area like covering transparent this should be 15 percent 15 to 20 percent should be greater than the area of this so that there should not be any shades which falls onto this